So put on pretty habits of birds. So actually when we go into the individual topics, there'll be a little bit of overlap. You know, there'll be some topics which were covered in the first day that will, you will encounter in this slide as well. And you will, in the forthcoming presentations also, there'll be like a little bit of repetition, but that's the nature of the program. Uh, there's not much we can do about it. Um, so, uh, coming to fourth on uh, feeding habits, you know, birds, uh, if you generally look at, yeah, please um, you, you can broadly classify them on the diet that they typically have, right? So, they are either seed eaters, fruit eaters, plant eaters, um, eats both plant and animals, meat eaters, insect eaters, and fish eaters. This is not a very strict classification because uh, the birds that eat fruits, like hornbills, also sometimes when they are breeding, when they are raising the young, they have a lot of requirement for protein, right? So they start eating meat when they are like raising their chicks. Um, and the plant eaters also start eating, um, you know, um, sometimes I eat uh, protein, other animals, smaller uh, um, animals and things like that. So, uh, it's not a very strict classification, it's just like a broad guideline. And uh, so, the seed eaters are called granivorous birds, the pigeons that you see, munias, these would be under granivorous birds. Uh, frugivorous birds are like typically those who eat on fruits. Predominantly, fruits constitute a uh, major component of their diet. So, parakeets, they eat fruits, okay? Barbets, we saw the barbet, right, with the bristles on the base of its kukuru one, yeah? So, that's a barbet, copper with barbet, so that eats fruits. Carbivores, so uh, birds which typically eat only plant, right? So, a lot of these geese, um, bar-headed geese, which I said like flew, uh, flights over the Himalayas to come into India from Mongolia, right? So that eats only uh, plants, predominantly. Okay? And uh, uh, so we'll be seeing examples of each one of them. Omnivorous, like for example, crows. Crows are omnivorous. They eat anything. Whatever they get, they eat. So thrushes, brongos, they eat both plants and animals. Carnivores are typically like your eagles, right? Eagles, falcons, kites, vultures, they're all meat eaters. Okay. Insectivorous birds are like, they feed predominantly on insects. So we saw an ancient palm fruit yesterday. We saw like a blue-tailed bee eater yesterday. So these are all insectivorous birds. Swifts, swallows, woodpeckers, these are all insect, uh, primarily feed on insects. And fish eaters, or uh, fishing over birds, these birds eat typically fishes, ospreys, fish eagles, these are all examples, kingfishers, these are all examples of fish eating birds. Right? So we are going to see examples of each one of them. So uh, this is a very familiar bird, almost uh, in every apartment, every house, you can see this bird, blue rock pigeons. Um, and this, this is a very beautiful, very elegant looking bird, it's called a tricolor munia. So wherever the, you find an, uh, a palm millet field, uh, like if you observe in the mornings, these birds come to feed there, when the crop is ripening. So, in fact, it's sitting on a coil stock right now. Through uh, the birds, white cheeked barbet, cuckoo one uh, typically like eats thick, uh, uh, thick uh, uh, fruits, malabar parakeet, these also uh, eat fruits like you know uh, apples, um, cherries, plums, so all these, uh, these birds love these fruits. Herbivores, as I said like uh, bar headed geese and grey like geese, these birds eat uh, plants, aquatic plants. Okay. And they, like, you know, what they do is, like, they typically feed in the night time. 
and uh, they uh, daytime like they don't do much they just like you know um, you know just like uh, rest during the day mostly during the night time they venture into paddy fields uh, eat the um, you know eat feed there and come back to the wetland just to rest okay and omnivorous birds are like typically eat both plants and animals this drongo this typically a lot of times you find them eating uh, insects but what they also do sometimes they feed on nectar also you can find them um, like if you are if you find a flame of forest tree right so sometimes you find them pecking on the tree and uh, you know tasting the nectar uh, same with the ground uh, ground headed thrush or sorry orange headed thrush also um, it's a very colorful bird if we go to uh, this uh, nilgiri biosphere nature park in anakatti and if you watch at the ground level you can sometimes find these birds uh, feeding on the ground right carnivorous birds as the name implies these are typically like uh, meat eating birds peregrine falcon it's a very powerful uh, flyer um and likes to hunt birds we saw the video of the peregrine falcon hunting uh, i think it was a pigeon it was hunting yeah starling yeah it was a starling that we saw in the video so it's a very powerful hunter takes prey much more much larger size than it is and there's like uh, egrets are also like you know a meat eating birds they like to eat on frogs small snakes um fishes so it's like uh, typically uh, a meat eating bird even though it doesn't appear to look like that it is typically a meat eating bird insectivorous birds uh, we saw the asian palm stoke yesterday which is like uh, consumes insects when it is flying so this is a barn swallow uh, in tamil it is called as uh, tagai vilan it comes it breeds in the himalayas and it uh, comes down to the south in the winters and then goes back you know when the summer begins so we only get to see them in the summers um uh, this barn swallow is typically a uh, insectivorous bird it only takes insects it doesn't uh, feed on plants european beetles they like uh, any flying insect not only bees but their favorite food is bees and um, uh, they also like to take feed on other uh, insects like cicadas uh house flies mosquitoes so on so forth. so fish eating birds um osprey we saw the osprey uh, capturing fish yesterday right that video we saw so the osprey is like a fish eating bird and kingfishers it's a very colorful kingfisher called an oriental dwarf kingfisher uh it's very small it's only this much size and it uh, likes to uh, hunt on fishes this is also seen in the pamto district by the way this is not something uh, from elsewhere all the birds uh, that i have shown in the presentation are all seen in pamto district so this colorful bird um, in oriental dwarf kingfisher is a like, very small bird it likes to eat fishes in this picture however it is also eating uh, it's a gecko gecko that it is uh, it's a kind of lizard so that it is uh, it has in its mouth so when it is breeding when it is like raising its young it likes to bring the different kinds of food for the young uh, because like the, the birds when they are very small they sometimes eat two times the amount of their body weight for example if a uh, if a human weighs about 60 kg imagine somebody eating 120 kg every day so the, the, but the birds have like such a huge uh, metabolism that they are able to digest uh, that huge amount of food that they eat every day and this birds are uh, like when they are breeding typically they keep bringing food around the flock uh, of course when the sun is out when there's light they keep bringing the food to its young okay yeah so like um, how do you tell like you know what the bird typically feeds on the clues from the beak right so when you look at the beak it looks like this hook tip 
it means that it is meant for tarring flush. So it's like a typically a meat eating bird. Um, so this this is spoon bill. We didn't see it yesterday, but it, it's also seen in Krishnamurti day. What it does is it does this uh, with a, like a spoon uh, which is the currently which is the pandra mari kanila teri to. Whenever it comes up, it's fresh immediately it opens and grabs it. So woodpecker, long chisel like because it is like chiseling on wood. Um, cardinal, uh, you know, a conical bill. So it is like uh, typically eating grains, right? So it's uh, the beak is meant for applying a lot of force to uh, crush the grain and eat it. Harons, typically a like spear like bill. So why they have the spear like bill is like they just want to harpoon. Like on the eat your chikutra mari, it will like harpoon the uh, fish, impale it, kill it, and then uh, try to eat it. Okay? So pelicans. Pelicans, uh, what they do is like they scoop up water like this. 5 liters, 10 liters in one scoop, filter out the water, and they know swallow the fish. Right? Wimber, Wimber, uh, it has like a long curved beak like this one. Right? And uh, what it does is it probes the sand, looking for insects like uh, earthworms and things like that, which are underneath the sand. And it requires, like, it, it doesn't like uh, um, probe for uh, insects in an, in an area like this because the earth is hard, right? So it can't probe deep inside. So it requires soft sand, which is found in seashores and other wetlands. In the shores of wetlands, that's where this bird gets its food. So, yeah. uh, the beach shape of the bird is similar to the bird. Yeah, yeah. We see actually very good question. Uh, the parrots and people now, ornithologists now consider parrots and falcons to be very closely related. Even though like it's a fruit eating bird, evolutionarily it seems that you know they had like a very close ancestor in the past. In a few uh, uh, you know thousands of years ago, but they had a common ancestor and then they have split. So so um so now we know that you know the shape of the beak uh, determines how what kind of food it eats. But uh, there's also some other uh, you know very peculiar behavior uh, that you know pertains to how birds go about finding their food. Okay. So uh, what a woodpecker does is like it knocks on the wood, it and then it listens to insects which are moving inside the wood. It, you know keeps its uh, ear like this. Turns it hard to one side to listen for grubs which are moving inside the wood. And then they start, once they hear something, there they start chiseling. They don't just go randomly chiseling everywhere. Right? So first they listen for some movement underneath the wood and then they start chiseling. Second is like uh, birds like a sunbird. Um, uh, so what they do is like, you know, they move from flower to flower, okay, and sometimes like, you know, the plants also depend on these birds for pollination, okay, so these birds visit other plants and then from the pollen from this flower, they transfer to the other flower and that's how the plants also are able to regenerate, right, and um, interestingly what the plant does is, it only put out, puts out a certain amount of nectar, for, um, for example, every 45 minutes or so, or one hour or so, it will put out a certain amount of nectar. The sunbird comes, drinks that quantity of nectar, uh, goes to the next flower and keeps uh, moving around, and after an hour, it will come back to the same flower. Okay, it's very fascinating to watch. So, the plants uh, and the sunbirds, they have co evolved So, Plant has something to give to the uh, sunbird, and the sun, sunbird has something to offer to the plant. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship, and it, they are doing it very strategically, right? Okay. So the other interesting thing is like when um, it's a two birds, 
This is a velvet fronted nut hatch. This is like a woodpecker. Both are feeding on insects. Both are feeding on trees. And sometimes both these birds are seen in the same areas. So that's a competition for food. But the way that you know they, these birds avoid the competition or like um, is by altering their foraging behavior. So this here, woodpecker, what it does is it starts at the bottom, uh, it starts at any part of the tree, moves in circles around the tree, searching for insects. Right? This velvet front nut hatch, what it does is it starts at the top and then spirals down to the tree and then moves to the next tree. So these, uh, you know, even though like we um, need the same kind of uh, insects, they, the way that they forage for insects is different. So <clears throat> as I said, like, you know, the woodpecker, it moves around the tree, chiseling for it. Yesterday we saw that woodpecker, right? So it was like, from one side, it went behind, and then it came this, this side, and then moved to the next tree. And then, nut hatch, from the top, it comes to the spiral fashion, searching for insects. There is another bird called the tree creeper. Uh, tree creeper starts at the bottom, spirals on the way up. Okay, we don't have tree creepers in southern India, but in north India, we have tree creepers. Okay? So, um, so they have a, a creeper here, and it's just like a cartoon where, like you know, all the three have a crash together and then that's uh, an accident. So these are all like pictures. You know, this uh, an Indian spotted tree creeper, uh, street throated woodpecker, and a white-tailed nuthatch. So uh, the other interesting thing is like, you know, uh, somebody asked me a question yesterday in Krishnamati, why is it that we so, see so many herons and not other birds, right? So this is the answer. So even though all these birds, for example, uh, this is a plover, this is a flamingo, so this is a pelican. So even though all the birds occupy a wetland, they occupy different ecological niches. Okay, so um, we have this uh, flowers, which is it's a, it's a kind of a visual feeder. It needs to see its prey before you know taking it. Right? This is a flower. We'll see more about it when we come to wetland birds. And then there's like this tactile feeder which probes the sand and tries to uh, uncover insects which is located deep inside the sand. And then uh, at some water level, these but this um, you know carlos and uh, I think this is a dovecher. So this requires a very soft sand to probe into because it has a very long beak, it probes straight into it. So it comes under very shallow water. That's where it starts feeding in. It requires very soft, very shallow clay water for some you know back you know beak to uh, penetrate into. And then we have uh, oyster catchers, we have avocets, we have herons, we have uh, ducks, we have flamingos, we have terns, and in much deeper water than that, we have the flamingos. Right? So, uh, for example, in our, the problem in our Pandur wetland is that we don't have a shoreline at all. Right? We don't have a shoreline at all. Most of the wetlands, uh, in Pyanto, what is happening is the transition from the land to the water is abrupt, like this. So, what will happen? Yeah, exactly. So, that's what is happening. Because all the flowers and other waders, they don't have habitat to forage it. So, you only get like the deep water birds, like pelicans and ducks. You won't get the shallow water birds. Right? You, you don't have a shoreline at all in you know, most of the wetlands in climate. So that is a problem. And that's what we are trying to raise awareness about um, to our uh, you know, administrators saying that, you know, there has to be like, uh, uh, 
uh, ultimate, uh, you know, gradual transition from shore to water. It should not be abrupt, right? So, um, so that's something that to think about. We'll talk about it more when we come to the topic of conservation. So, and then uh, there are a few birds which are capable of storing food also. Uh, apart from the feeding that they do on a day-to-day -day basis, like ants, ants store their food for, um, for example, uh, a long time, right? They take the food to their, uh, uh, you know, ant hills and uh, store it there. Um, for a rainy, a rainy time or a season where they cannot forage for food, they store it for a rainy day. So similarly, some birds are also capable of storing food. For example, this is a, an American species which is storing these nuts by creating hollows and the, uh, they can store their nuts in that tree. And they have to guard it also from it being stolen by other woodpeckers. Okay. So that will usually be one bird on the um, watch and uh, the other one collecting the food. Okay. And uh, we have already seen about the trike where it uses the thorns, where it, uh, you know, captures bigger, this is a small bird, by the way. I think this is a prania and uh, it's a warbler. Um, so the uh, trike impairs the warbler on a thorn and keeps it there. And then uh, it taps a little bit of foot and consumes, consumes it from time to time. And there will be a lot of thorns with a lot of prey in it. So it will, whenever it can't find food, it will go back to its storage and then take the food from there. Right? And I think we have already seen about this uh, a very familiar example where uh, the cattle and the cattle egret. So the cattle egret um, uh, will feed on the insects which are on the cattle. And when the cattle moves, it will disturb a lot of grasshoppers and other insects on the ground, which the cattle egret also uh, feeds on. So they have like a kind of a symbiotic relationship. Why symbiotic? Because for the cattle, it helps uh, the cattle get rid of its ectoparasites. The parasites, um, the oromular, the pain, uh, pain on the matter, the lamma on the, and the unico on the, start to clear for it. And in turn, the cattle work help it does this by just by moving around. It disturbs a lot of insects, and then um, the insects get fought by the cattle egret. Okay. And uh, similarly, if you go to Kaziranga, where the where you can see the one-horned rhinoceros, you will find a lot of miners, jungle miners, great miners. You will be sitting on, they'll be riding on uh, the uh, rhinoceros back. Similar kind of function. They like you know peck on uh, the small ectoparasites found on the rhinoceros body, and also the other insects which are uh, getting disturbed when the rhinoceros moves around. Those are also getting consumed by the miners. Okay, so they all have like a very uh, um, symbiotic kind of a relationship. So uh, apart from the uh, you know um, uh, you know the birds of prey, we also have like scavengers. For example, the Egyptian vulture is a classic scavenger. It's a type of a vulture. Uh, it feeds on the carcasses of other animals. And uh, uh, what it does is like, there are some animals which doesn't hunt on its own, doesn't scavenge also, but likes to steal food from other birds. For example, this is a frigate bird, which is found in the open sea. Okay, it's not found in inland. We don't get to see it in Bimoto. So, it, so from this pelican, it is trying to steal the food from its mouth. Okay, so there are some birds which like to do that. They don't like to work hard for their food. They try to um, steal from the other birds. They are called pirates. So, as I already said, um, there are a lot of birds which are uh, which are helpful in pollination of flowers. They trans by feeding on the nectar, they transport the pollen from one flower to the next flower. Uh, so, uh, this in this process, they help in the process of pollination and uh, regeneration of the uh, plants. This is a very similar bird to a sunbird, it's called a flower pecker. 
what it does is it doesn't uh, uh, feed the flower from the top instead it starts pecking at the bottom and draws the nectar from the bottom okay but this also feeds uh, um, you know fruits flowers uh, and uh, as with the hornbills they also help in dispersal of seed because by consuming uh, small fruits and berries they defecate elsewhere and this from this um, a new plant generates okay so they help in seed dispersal okay so this is the final slide of this presentation uh so uh, the interesting when we when we talking about feeding behavior this aspect also needs to be covered uh, because like we all know that uh, birds lay eggs and raise their young right but uh, not all the young birds are fed by the bird itself directly okay there are some birds which are born blind like in this case it's a blue neck uh, sorry black neck to monarch this was photographed by me in maharashtra but it's also seen in bangalore district so uh, what you can see is the chick is being fed by the farmer okay and in this case the domestic chicken the chick is not fed by the farmer the chick is uh, capable of finding its own food and consuming that food the only um, a role that the parent does is it leads it to the source of the food okay and uh, so the technical term to distinguish the two types of chicks is called nidicolous chicks which require parents to feed them and nidicolous uh, chicks which uh, which are like you know the uh, chicks can feed them on themselves but they require their parents to take them to the source of the food okay So that's it. Uh, we are done with uh, the feed and the feeding behavior. Um, so any questions on this so far? Yeah. Uh, 